Stop this madness at once. Is there not a grain of sense between you? If the old man wants to fight, let him. By all means, fight. Such is the custom of Dueler's Ditch, but not to the death. Do not spill the blood of your compatriots. Compatriots? Do compatriots break honest agreements out of spite? Do they I lie and you. cheat? The Baileys are nothing but crooks. My family followed that ridiculous agreement to the letter. This matter was resolved. The Round Table decreed half the forest to be preserved. What happened? Shard, burned to the ground. And was this your family's doing, Thomas? Of course not. The old man's deranged. What good is a charred forest to us? We're carpenters. The Radstags have fled for the hills. The land is useless to us now. Your half was of a father thought we'd sell it to you. Don't speak about my father. You have no idea. One of you, John, call this off. No one will think any less of you. They've gone too far this time, Arthur. Thomas? I need to defend my family's honor. I won't take these accusations sitting down. Very well. Commence. Hmm. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> oh. Ah. Will you not cheer the victor? He was a young man, John. This feud has gone on too long. I shall send someone to investigate the matter. It will be resolved. He agreed. Such is our way. Some will judge me for what has happened here today. They'll claim that because I could have stopped it, I should have. What do you think? I have only the authority my people have given me. They trust in the end, when Westminster falls, that democracy will take its place. Everything I do must be towards that goal. Any unnecessary use of power will break their trust, and trust is keeping this movement together not strength. Anyway, don't get the wrong idea. Our tourney grounds across the field are oft used for friendly bouts. Speak to Galahad if you're interested. Is there something you wish to discuss? Direct them to Percival. He enjoys bombarding newcomers with the riveting tales of Camelot and our history, as if it was already enshrined in legend. Anything else? Good. You could be the missing piece. I'm relieved Lancelot sent you to me. Merlin would have you running the beep test. Our contact in Westminster told us of your story. You are no doubt someone who can perform beyond rank and file duties. I had some things I wanted to ask you if we ever crossed paths, but now isn't the time. There's a more pressing matter at hand. This feud between the Fletchers and the Baileys, it started as bickering. But now there's blood involved. I fear it will escalate further until one of them is driven from the land. This is not what anyone wants. To lose either family is to lose the food on our tables or the tables themselves. Hunters and woodcutters are the basis of any decent civilization. On top of that, if we're ever going to finish Merlin's trebuchet, we need supplies and aid from both families. So, I need a trustworthy outsider to investigate. In short, I need you. Consider it your initiation. Once upon a time, the two families were friendly. They're neighbors. The Baileys even helped the Fletchers build their treehouse. It's an impressive structure, I must say. The conflict stems from a piece of disputed land. 
The Baileys kept expanding their lumber yard into the Fletcher's hunting grounds. When the Fletchers appealed to the round table for judgment, none had a superior claim. So he split the land in half. They both felt robbed, but the matter was resolved for a time. That was until the fire. A section of the land caught a flame during the night. It was mostly on the Fletcher's side, but the Baileys weren't unscathed. They both accuse each other of starting it. If either claim is truthful, then sanctions would have to be handed out. I need you to get to the truth of the matter, and I want some evidence. Well, to be entirely truthful, I think it's unnecessary. The Baileys easily could have expanded their yard in a different direction, or made do with what they had. Same for the Fletchers. That land may have been their most bountiful, but they have acres of Camelot territory to hunt in. I suspect pride is mixed up in this somewhere, on both sides. I have no reason to suspect either family. They both accuse each other of the same crime, and I don't wish to inflict bias on your judgment. I would trust any of my men to carry out the investigation impartially, but they wouldn't. The decision on their land dispute, for example. It was a 50-50 compromise, yet both perceive it as a loss induced by bias. With an outsider carrying out the investigation, they might accept the round table's decision. Us. Camelot. Pieces are falling into place, and the gentry are on their way out. They're not urgent. You can focus on the task at hand. Get your affairs in order quickly. We could have an all-out war on our hands if nothing is done. bothering me get lost people have a negative attitude One moment, please. One second. And done. Oh, it's you. I'm afraid I can't let you in without a bowler hat. It's Polisso. Go right in. I'll buzz you through. What's that smell? Oh, it's you.
do hope Father is proud. In a hurry. A hurry. An important meeting, An perhaps. Important meeting, perhaps. <laughs> I, I think I not. Knowing you people can reproduce. I'm sure we'll find a use for that sometime. Ahoy, ahoy, wave that up. Our meeting will have to take place over the telephone, I'm afraid. Scheduling conflict. Even so, I'd like to thank you for your assistance up until now. You're more helpful than you realize. All in good time, there's an important matter I wish to discuss first. At any rate, congratulations on moving up in the world. You've certainly taken advantage of all this troubled city has to offer. Your diligence is almost impressive. Nobody's ever managed to discover as much about Angel in so little time. But I can't help but feel animosity between us. So, in the spirit of goodwill and discovery, I'm willing to offer you a deal. Cooperate with my organization, and I'll give you my most valuable resource. Information. Because information is power, and I know who you are, who you really are. Cooperation with Angel can be summed up in an utterance. Do as you are told. Follow that simple rule and you'll get everything you've ever wanted. Considering you have no bargaining power, that's a pretty good deal if you ask me. Go on. Angel believes in whatever I want it to. I am Angel. And what I believe is on a need-to-know basis. That's something we can discuss at a later date. I have bold plans for this city, and I want someone equally bold to enact them. I could get into specifics, but I won't. Good. I'm listening. Then you're useless to me. And that's not a position anyone wants to be in. When you come to your senses, there's a card on my desk. Go to the address on it. This conversation is over. Be seeing you. It must be horrible to live in places without love. I I'm see busy one here. more up and cover peasant, I'll go mad. Am I invisible? Or are you an invalid? Which is it?
Are you ready? Good. Start by questioning the leaders, Edward Fletcher and Harold Bailey. Get both sides of the story. Then investigate the scene of the fire. See what you can find. Lancelot ordered patrols to keep an eye on the area and warned everyone to stay clear, so nothing should be tampered with. Once you've brought evidence of the truth, I can bring you into the fold. For now, I'll let Lancelot know you can come and go to the castle as you please. Good luck. Need me to get you a hobby horse to go with your new hobby? something I'm not sure I'll be honest what my brother did was regrettable John and the boy weren't part of this feud or at least they shouldn't have been being knights of Camelot they live or lived at the castle seems they had a feud of their own after the fire a microcosm of conflict it's unfortunate it escalated I almost lost my Mary last year to illness. I can't imagine the pain Harold must be going through. Whatever he did, no one deserves that. It's about time. There's been too much confusion around this fire. It must be stamped out. Harold Bailey himself, I suspect. Or maybe his father. I doubt he would have gotten any of his boys to do it. Who else would do it? If you have any evidence to the contrary, then fair enough. I'll put a sock in it. But I don't know anyone else with a motive. While I'm certainly not shy about making their involvement in the fire known, I think they're good people at art. They're just stubborn. They know that land is ours. We moved into the area and claimed it weeks before they even arrived. And they think just because they helped build this place that we owed them. They received banquets of food in return. More than fair. This was the early days of Camelot, nearly eight years ago. They could have starved without our generosity. I was preparing dinner for my family. I do terrific venison stew. Here. Have a can. Very well. I'm Edward Fletcher, hunter by trade. Me and my family packed up shop and came to Albion seven years ago from Bromley. Back there, we had to fend for ourselves. But here, we're protected. We can hunt in peace. It's a good living, and we're good at it. Me and my brother come from a long line of huntsmen. Our father, grandfather and great-grandfather all stalked the wastes. And I hope my descendants will do the same. Mary, my oldest, continues the tradition. Sarah, my youngest, can't stand it. Says it's cruel. Each to their own, I guess. Wouldn't say we need help. But if you ever fancy picking up a spear, I'd pay you well for any game you bring us. Let's have a look, then. Junk. Junk. Lovely junk. Hey. 
Those baileys couldn't stand to leave a nice woods be. They had to chop it all down for the sake of materialistic things like chairs. They didn't get their way, so they burnt it down. I'm Sarah. The rest of my family are hunters, but I know better. The animals feel pain just as we do. They act like I'm some kind of revolutionary. Later. Why didn't God give Radstags two bodies instead of two heads? That's the bit we don't eat. For sure, go for it. I bet it was the Baileys. They most likely discovered fire for the first time in their lineage and got carried away. I'm Mary, Camelot's greatest huntress. I've perfected the art. My cousin Damien's pretty good, I don't doubt it. But I'm the best there is. Don't be a stranger. What's up? I see. Be careful out there. The Baileys are loose cannons. I'm a seamstress. Have been all my life. I make gambesons and the like for the Camelot army. Take care. He had an accident, that's all. A tree fell on me. Hazard of the trade. I'm Ryan Bailey. Not much to say, really. I don't get up to much. I work hard, and I keep my head down. Yeah? Good. Not sure who done it myself. All I know is that my brother shouldn't have died over some poxy forest. Are you? You round table lot could have stopped it. But you didn't. You just stood and watched it happen. Bye. Hello there. I didn't lose my son. He was taken from me. That Horson, John Fletcher, murdered him. He can call it a duel all he wants. Fletcher knew my son wouldn't refuse. Thomas would have done anything to defend our family. Worst of all, Fletcher knew he'd win. He's a trained killer since birth. It was murder. Murder hiding behind the notion of honor. John Fletcher is a bitter old man to rob my son of the rest of his life. Someone with a good sword hand should give him what for. I should try myself. I want to. I want to tear his guts out with my bare hands. But all I can do is swing this axe. And my son's already lost their brother. I'm Harold Bailey. We were a family of merchants before we came to Albion. We wanted to settle down here, so we picked up a trade. At first, we were just woodcutters. But soon enough, we started building our own furniture. And then other people's furniture. And then houses and everything in between. We finally feel like we belong somewhere. I hope the rest of London will see what's happening here and accept Camelot as the way forward. We have too many workers for the little land we have. But we'll buy any wood you can spare. Give you a good price for it too. Good. The truth about this fire will prove our innocence. The Fletchers. I don't have any evidence, but I know it was them. That may not be good enough for the round table, but it's good enough for me. They're criminals. They were nice enough at first. We even helped build that treehouse of theirs, but they quickly revealed their true colors. That land is rightfully ours. It's on our side of the walkway. Stopping our field at some arbitrary line is ridiculous. They have the entire woods to hunt in. Do you know how much additional manpower it takes to haul wood long distance? 
I used to think they were just stubborn. <laughs> now I know it's something more malicious. After what they did to my son, I'll never forgive them. Listening to the radio. I always tune into Nigel's show in the evenings. I'd almost drifted off in my chair when the smoke got me up. I thought the whole forest was going to burn down. We managed to stop the spread with the water from the pond. <laughs> of course he does. Look, I know this fire doesn't look good for us. It mostly being their land. But I promise you, it wasn't us. The Fletchers are conniving. They know if we ever did something like that, we'd face sanctions. Most likely, they'd get their half of the land back. No worries. Go on. No worries. See you around. Greetings. Thank you. That means a lot. Most people want to forget what happened, like it's an inconvenience. Thank you. The round table sure took their time to send someone, but that's not a slight on you, dear. I'm Susan. I grew up in a small tribe outside of London. I met Frank when he was a wandering trader. He came through the town with his father. I decided to go with him and never looked back. We eventually settled down here to raise our family properly. The road is no place for children. Bye. Greetings. I saw two people out there that night, shortly before the fire. Didn't get a good look at them, though. My eyes aren't what they once were. I'm Frank Bailey, Harold's old man. My working days are behind me, so I mainly handle logistics. Keeps my noggin busy. See ya. Sorry, can't talk right now. Sorry, can't talk right now.
Need help? Bit of a hoarder, are you? Hello, sir. Name's Timothy, or Timmy for short. Saw the fire with me own eyes, I did. Thought the old forest was a goner till it started chucking down. Could be I can help with your investigation. Always fancied a career in sleuthing. I watched you snooping round like a prat, that's why. Harold and Susan, but I just call them mum and dad. I'm their youngest. Up to what? I just want to help with the investigation, that's all. Thanks. I try not to think about it. Me and me older brother Ryan looked up to Thomas. Well, since I don't fancy digging round in the mud for clues, I can do you one better. I saw a bloke light the fire that night. I didn't see his mug. I was watching from the lumber yard, but he was suited up like a Camelot knight. He ran off to the old shack over there. I didn't follow him or nothing. I'm not supposed to go out on my own. So, did I crack the case or what? Not really. It was dark until the fire properly got going. By then, he'd run off to the shack. You know, checking the trees. It's a family business. A witness who just solved your case. Be more grateful. No worries. I'm always glad to lend a hand to those in need. Where shall the winds take us today? Need something. What? Let me see that. Well, this certainly isn't my handwriting. Looks like it were written by a child. And why would I address my brother by his full name? And most importantly of all, why would I have him burn down my own land? To get one over on them? <laughs> That's ridiculous. Us Fletchers don't act in pettiness. Tricked by the Baileys, no doubt. I trust you to see the truth for this letter and dismiss it in your inquiries. Fire away. The Baileys are the type to deny reality when it suits them. Of course we didn't burn down our own land. We're simple folk. We don't like trouble. Very well. Later.
Can I help you? He had an accident, that's all. A tree fell on me. Hazard of the trade. I... I... Oh, shit. It's not what it looks like. At least, it didn't happen the way you think. Please, just let me explain. It was an accident. Me and Timmy were sneaking off to the tavern that night. We wanted to surprise Thomas. One of those bleeding rad stags came out of nowhere and ran right into my leg. I didn't even notice I dropped the lantern. We ran off and Timothy went to get me some bandages. By the time he came back, the fire started. No. I think my mum suspects, but she doesn't know. My dad wouldn't believe it, even if he saw it. I don't know. I told him not to. We knew this fire would be bad for the family, me especially. I guess he wanted to protect me. Probably afraid of losing another brother. Please, tell Arthur the whole truth. Make him understand. What's your business? How goes the investigation? Go on. As I unfortunately suspected. The evidence? I was so sure this was about the land. I didn't think Harold and Edward could both be wrong. What exactly happened? Those poor boys. The guilt they must be feeling over their brother. Terrible. I'll have a talk with them. Consider the matter dealt with. I know Edward Fletcher. He's not one to demand sanctions over the mistakes of two boys. And Harold? Well, I'll talk with him too. I asked for the truth and you gave it to me. Now I must act on it. I shall be glad to settle this dispute amicably. Thank you. You've done well and proven yourself worthy of Camelot. From this day forth, this land is your land. You shall defend it as your own. I bestow upon you the rank of sergeant. May you serve it well. Now, I had questions if we ever cross paths. Questions about our new head of the civil service, Smythe. Guinevere, our agent in Westminster, has been looking into them for years, but they remain elusive. Who are they? I see. That's some alarming intel. How did you come by it? Roth. I imagine that trail led you to Westminster. But who let you in? Few have the privilege to come and go. Curious. I assume that meeting never happened, judging by your prompt incarceration. After you escaped, Tristan and Istult met you at the tournament. It seems you were more than just an observer. They said you were there to prevent an assassination. Why exactly? But you turned him down. Honorable, considering what Smythe did to you. A shame you couldn't prevent it. 
That tragedy gave them more power. I'd wager Mr. X was more fond of Smythe than he let on. But that's in the past. No point dwelling on it. I expect this Smythe character will take a role in things to come. We must be ready to face all the gentry can throw at us. They're with Smythe now. That gets me onto your next assignment. I want to strike a blow against the Tommies, but I don't want to take military action. At least not yet. Percival is looking into something that you can help with. Speak to him. Good luck, Sergeant. Speak your mind. Oi! Watch it! Ever vigilant. Ah, there you are. Arthur told me of your arrival. I'd stand up to greet you, but I'm too busy with my work, as you can see. I am Percival, Head of Communications for Camelot. This is my personal office. Quite beautiful, no? What you see here is the result of hard work, perseverance, and my genius idea of stealing the BBM storage key after I quit my job. Now, whatever happens, we have got their bloody equipment, and they have not. Words of encouragement, valiant speeches straight from Arthur's mouth, and near-constant reminders of what the gentry has taken from us. Or, as the layman calls it, propaganda. Help, yes. Any assistance is much appreciated. You see, one of my duties is to keep in contact with all of the fractured factions in this great nation of ours. Partly to offer assistance, and partly to stop them from getting any bright ideas about assisting the other side. I've been in conversation with a strange tribe based in Brickton, and they are not happy with how these devious Tommies have been treating them. I, for one, can't stand to see oppression especially when the oppressed have agreed to oust the Tommies in favor of Camelot protection. We stand to gain much more than mere tickets from this exchange. If we can show the people that Camelot stands for democracy and freedom, then it's only a matter of time before others follow in this tribe's footsteps. And if we can do it while kicking the Tommies in their righteous fannies, well... That's a win-win, isn't it? My heart bleeds for all those who live under tyranny. <laughs> Especially those who can develop into key strategic alliances. They don't like anything made after 1922, for one. They believe the Great War was a sign from the spirits that we should all return to living in huts. I believe any man, woman or child, should be free to live life as they desire, even if that means wiping their asses with sticks and stones. As expected of the gentry's foot soldiers, the Tommies see the tribe's quirky and strange beliefs as signs of savagery. Take their town's name, for example. Instead of referring to it as Brickton, the way the tribes have taken to calling it, the Tommies insist on referring to it as Brixton. They believe the Tommies are there to civilize them. I believe this is our chance to show the Tommies what civilization truly means. I can see now why you caught Arthur's keen eye. I want you to go to Brixton and find Roach, the tribe's leader. 
He is a strange man, but you must treat him with utmost respect. He has a plan on how to push the Tommies away, help him return to me, and then perhaps you'll find yourself within Camelot's highest ranks. As expected of the gentry, take their towns, they believe that... They don't like anything made after night, I believe. Good luck. Patience is key, for the quest continues. Hail, Sergeant. That's a broad question. I'm not one to reminisce. Not a good habit for people in my line of work. I was in the forces, commando unit. Had a few tours under my belt. Saw a lot. Learned a little. Not a period of my life I hold in high regard. Later, I became a government advisor on specific tactical implementation. Use of military assets. That sort of thing period of my life I hold in contempt. I can't help but feel responsible, in some small part, for the Great War. Look around you. I don't think we did very well on the remit of protecting the people of the United Kingdom. The ultimate hidden truth of the world is that it is something that we make, and could just as easily make differently. No. I'm from a small coastal town in the west. Truth be told, there was a time where I'd do anything to avoid being in London. Who do you want to know about? Highly organized, highly motivated, well trained, and ideologically committed. The one advantage we have over them is their lack of organic support. I wouldn't be confident in that remaining the case, especially if their propaganda techniques gain traction. A threat of yesterday had their hair cut by another outfit of criminals. Think of them like an old landmine, something that should be disarmed, but easily avoided. London's preeminent criminal gang, about as dangerous as they come, but ultimately, susceptible to the issues that plague such organizations. Greed, self-interest, dishonesty. The tactics to defeat criminals are tried and tested. The gentry are the complacent mass that we'll have to shift in order to meaningfully achieve anything in London. Farewell. Be more careful. There's a war. You have eyes? Use them. London, there's a place. generator that's powering their turrets. And finally, 
You'll spread rumors about the man leading this battalion, the dreadful Lieutenant Doyle. Fulfill these three tasks, and soon Camelot will have an ally in Brigton. We are not invested in Arthur's dream of a united London, writhing under his benevolent thumb. We simply wish to be left alone. And unfortunately, the only one willing to grant us that wish was Arthur. Fear makes companions of us all. Watch your step. I see strange storm clouds in your horizon. I wish I could meet the Queen. In the gap and all that. to say about Lieutenant Doyle. <coughs> I mean, yes, I don't quite enjoy his methods, and the way he constantly doles out surprise inspections whenever he feels like it. But it is not my place to comment on these things. Really? What is it? What? That can't be true. He promised to stay with us until the Brixton mission was done. Then again, he's always spoken poorly about our performance. And his disdain for Brixton is hard to miss. Thank you for sharing, but I need to tell my mates about this. Roll, Britannia. Britannia, roll the waves. Britons never, never, never shall be slaves. for something to give you a little boost. Yeah. The earth trembles at your mighty footsteps. Has the great work begun? I've seen the fruits of your labor. Tommy's whispering rumors in between hurried trips to the loo. 
and feeble attempts to fix their machines. For our next step, we're going after Major Sneed, a man who craves the city's crippling comforts, which is my way of saying that whenever he's here, he's always on the edge of giving up. Soon he'll be arriving in Brickton for his annual checkup, an affair he dreads with every passing winter. Through your handiwork, we're going to give him the little push he needs. First, you will spread anti-sneed graffiti around his beloved outpost. Then, you will set fire to a pile of precious cow manure and create a foul smell over Brickton. And, finally, you will spread rumors about our dear Major. Farewell. Good luck. Tread lightly. Oh, how I wish we could stay like this forever. Strange storm clouds in your horizon. Be careful. I know you're watching me! I like to say that sometimes, just to mess with whoever might be watching. You'd have to be insane to take on the Tommies. You're back! I told all of my mates at the barracks about you. We knew there was something strange about Doyle. Absolutely not. My feelings about Sneed are all positive. <coughs> I don't like his attitude, though. Every time he comes to survey us, he complains about the sorry state of Brixton. That's not our fault. Uh, Brixton. Well, go on then. Tell me. I'll leave. Who does he think he is? We need that time. They promised us they wouldn't cut our leave. Thank you for telling me the truth. Now it's my turn to go and share it. God save our gracious queen. Long live our noble queen.
stay like this forever. The earth trembles at your mighty footsteps. How goes your labors? Yes, the fruits of your labor fill the air. Be it the sweet scent of manure, or even the sweeter sound of Sneedly insults. Laura, what's wrong? It's Sneed. He's arrived at the gate and he's most unhappy. Is that so? Wayfarer, go with Laura. See what you can learn and what we can use. Yes, sir. My apologies, sir. I assigned you here to civilize these savages and to teach them the ways of our society. And what do I find? One of you Mind the gap and all that. in laxatives with your rations, and now the toilets are filled to the brim with dung. Your generators have been sabotaged under your very eyes, and now the entire outpost is without electricity. I've heard disrespectful soldiers whispering nasty words about your great Lieutenant Doyle. Some I wish I could make has a plastered uncivil words about me upon the outpost's walls. Soldiers have been asking me about baseless rumors, the origin of which puzzles and annoys me. The entire outpost smells like cow shite, no matter where you bloody are. And if that wasn't enough, now my precious wagon, filled with all of my necessities, is rule stuck Britannia. on the path Britannia, to this the way. forsaken place. Britons never, never, why never all of shall you are be now slaves. On clean up duty, and if I hear one word about it, I swear I'll send this entire outpost to the pits. Dismissed. Sir, yes, sir. You heard your superior officer. Move it, move it, move it! You... You should tell Roach about this. I'll keep watch. I know you're watching me! Only the canyon's fiercest sentry 
defender of her blessed land, a modern day legend devised by yours truly. I'm sorry, what did you say? I'm a trifle deaf in this ear. Go forth, Shadow. Oh, how I wish we could stay like this forever. I'm sure we'll find a use for that sometime. This area business is all prepared to face the cold steel of justice. The Major told us about you lot. Think you can just throw your wads around and get us to kowtow, eh? Not us. Not me and Goose. We're proper soldiers. Trained. Distinguished. Very, very expensive. One thousand tickets and we'll look the other way. No questions asked. Nah, pleasure doing business with you. Come on, Goose. Time for us to go. devil are you? And why are you not marching up and down this outpost like I told you all to do? 
whipping this den of savagery and depravity into a proper British outpost. I'd ask you what you are doing here, but clearly the answer is annoying me. How about I try using my boot up your disrespectful ass, soldier? I'll demote you faster than you can think. I come from a long line of soldiers, nearly 400 years worth, dating back to the Sneeds from Lanark and the Westbridges in Devon. But more than that, I didn't spend any of my damn time asking my superior officers all these inane questions. Brixton what? Give me that. My God, I knew it. These people are barbarians. Well, if they'd rather live in the filth and crime, so be it. I won't waste my time civilizing them no more. Lieutenant Doyle, come here at once. Yes, sir. You'd have to be insane to take on the Tommies. I've had enough of this place. By the power invested in me, I am officially ordering the full and total abandonment of the godforsaken town of Brixton. Thank God, sir. I'll be happy to never see this place ever again in my life. You and me, Doyle. You and me. May these people rot in the rat-infested hell of their own creation. We'll leave that fellow Woodward here. He's basically God native at this point anyway. Queen. Now, Long live our let's noble get the hell out of here. Sir. Yes, sir. God save the Queen. I see strange storm clouds in your horizon. Be careful. It's I can think of no better Clouds. reward for your work, work than my than lucky finally skull. over. Fashioned out of bones on his gone from the canyon herself. And it's all thanks to your best Where efforts. Not only as a charm, but a symbol. A representation of our enduring love for you. Wayfarer. Now go. And may the canyon watch you on your future endeavors. We stand victorious. on the Brickton Shadow. <laughs> That's what the folks back in Brixton are calling you. I heard the news over an encrypted radio frequency. Here, good pay for good work. Just don't let it get to your head. And we have much work ahead of us. Hurry on back to Merlin and tell him to send the troops so they can occupy Brickton. Ever vigilant.
one casualty. Excellent. Ah, poor phrasing. Tragic. Who was it? Sergeant Brown, sir. Landmine. A good man. An enthusiastic soldier. Was the outpost damaged in the attack? Superficially, sir. What's the combat readiness of the position? Well, it's not an easy question to answer. Well, it's all relative, isn't it, my young scout? My questions are easier than the bullets and blades that follow them. Hey. I, um... Gawain thinks there's quite a lot of work to be done. Night, Gawain. Respect the rank, scout. So you're telling me the outpost has been stripped. Was hoping it'd be equipped. We're stretched thin. Sergeant Pilly disagrees, of course. Sergeant Pilly? Who on earth is that? Scout, we are fighting for our lives here. I need an objective analysis of the battlefield. Stop covering your ass in some vain attempt to make me happy. Have a clear and succinct report on my desk in the hour. Dismissed. Yes, sir. So, you're the one I have to thank for Brickton. Hmm? Fine work you did. You must tell me about this shadow business one of these days. But for now, there are more pressing concerns. Your rank, Sergeant, is no befitting title for one who takes out an outpost single-handedly. From this day forth, shall hold the rank of Knight. May you honor it well in these coming endeavors. Knight, I require your services. I have a job that apparently requires the skill of two knights. Can you help? Know what? I don't have time to make requests. This is going to have to be in order. Arthur takes the leadership quite naturally. Fortunately, my soft skills are somewhat lacking. So you'll excuse me for getting straight to the point. Camelot recently secured an old Tommy outpost in the north. Tommy's abandoned it months ago. Left it to the hooligans. Regardless, we managed to drive the rabble out with minimal casualties. Quite the victory, according to some. But all I've heard is boasts. I need that outpost secure. Capable of withstanding heavy assault. Meet up with Gawain. Assess the situation. And while you're there, kick her up the arse. Fact I'm sending more than two soldiers. Never mind two knights. It's unacceptable. Fix it. Understood. Fine. But brevity would be appreciated. It protects the wall that surrounds Wandsworth. If you were to look at it on a map, you'll see a natural thoroughfare for potential attacks, which makes this outpost an invaluable defensive position for Camelot. Knight, that's exactly what I'd like you to find out. Demonstrably not. All clear. Good. Dismissed. Oi, watch it!